Salut, c'est Géraldine, bienvenue sur Comme une Française Team. As promised, I'm back in costume to talk about Les Fables de la Fontaine, which is such a famous book in the French culture. It was written by Jean de la Fontaine in the 17th century. And today, I wanted to go through the French phrases and expressions that are so famous in France and the most famous ones. Les Fables de la Fontaine. Let's dive in. I love this edition of Les Fables de la Fontaine. It was uh, this one printed around 2000, obviously, but it's an edition of uh, the beginning of the 20th century in they done in 1906 uh, by Benjamin Hardy, as you can see here. And all the drawings inside are magnificent. Um, I picked a few for you. So look at that. It's absolutely amazing and you can get it uh, at your local bookstore. Um, so I wanted to go through the main ones. So uh, one of the most famous fables de la Fontaine is Le Corbeau et le Renard. And uh, as you may know or not, if you went through my course Exercise Your French, you had a full lesson on Les Fables de la Fontaine, so maybe you already know a few of them. Uh, and in Le Corbeau et le Renard, something that comes up a lot in French culture is la morale, as we say. Um, and one of those is, mon bon monsieur, apprenez que tout flatteur vit au dépens de celui qui l'écoute. Mon bon monsieur, apprenez que tout flatteur vit au dépens de celui qui l'écoute. It means that, sir, know that everyone that's flattering you is just um, living so they can get something from you. And it's uh, une fable about un corbeau, and un renard, un corbeau is a crow, I think in English, and un renard is a fox, and the fox is flattering the, the crow in order to get his, his cheese, and at the end he wins. <laughs> Sorry for the spoiler, but this is a very, very famous one. So I highly recommend you read this one because it's one of the most famous with uh, Le Lièvre et la Tortue, which I picked somewhere. Yes, Le Lièvre et la Tortue is here and I think you probably know this one it's about a rabbit and a turtle um, going for a race and in the end the turtle wins because she's more dedicated and the rabbit doesn't really take it seriously and la morale here is another famous one rien ne sert de courir il faut partir à point rien ne sert de courir il faut partir à point so it means there is no need to hurry you just have to start and get working. Um, in Les Fables de la Fontaine, there are a lot of them, and honestly, when I went through this book, there are a lot of them, well, most of them, 90% of them that I didn't know, but the book is magnificent, so I'm going to read a lot of them. And um, again, even though French people don't necessarily know them, there are lots of morale that are in newspapers, in TV shows, that everybody knows and uses, especially to teach children la morale. So in Le Loup et l'Agneau, as you can see here, Le Loup et l'Agneau, it's about a wolf uh, accusing a lamb of um, polluting his water. So obviously it's not true. And uh, the morale is at the beginning here. La raison du plus fort est toujours la meilleure. La raison du plus fort est toujours la meilleure. It means that the strong, strongest you are, the more true you are. Okay. Um, la raison du plus fort est toujours la meilleure. And again, you can read the whole fable, but if you're just interested in French culture, you will hear it a lot. La raison du plus fort est toujours la meilleure. La grenouille qui se qui se veut faire aussi grosse que le bœuf. La grenouille qui se veut faire aussi grosse que le bœuf. You can see it here. I hope you can see it on the camera. And it's about um, a frog who wants to be as big as a beef. Uh, it's kind of a cow in a bœuf. And um, she's trying to get as big as her because he, she she's impressed and she wants more power because the beef seems stronger, but in the end she explodes. So yeah, that's another famous one. Um, 
Another one that has a very, very, very famous morale is Le Lion et le Rat, which I played when I was around 10, I think, at school. And for Le Lion et le Rat, it's about a lion and a rat. That's pretty easy. Un lion et un rat. For a mouse, we say une souris. Une souris. And this morale is patience et longueur de temps font plus que force ni que rage. Patience et longueur de temps font plus que force ni que to rage. And here it's about a rat who helps a lion to get out of a trap. And the rat is smaller. He's not as strong as a lion. But when you need someone to help you, you need all the strength available. And the rat here helps the lion escape. So again, Le Lion et le Rat, highly, highly recommended because it's a super famous uh, fable. Le Lièvre et la Tortue, I already talked about this one. And I picked... Uh, Oh yes, this one is extremely important. Uh, les animaux malades de la peste. Les animaux malades de la peste. It's about um, animals being sick of the plague. And here, it's something that is um, used a lot in newspapers when they want to talk about injustice, especially when a trial doesn't go as it should be or someone is not tried properly. Um, so it's a whole story about the lion having the plague and how are they going to judge who is responsible for it. And la morale here is selon que vous serez puissant ou misérable, les jugements de la cour vous rendront blanc ou noir. Selon que vous serez puissant ou misérable, les jugements de la cour vous rendront blanc ou noir. And here it means whether your um, strong, like, um, how do you say puissant? Very famous and strong and um, I can't remember the name in English. Or miserable, the judgments of um, the court will make you black or white. Well, white or white or black. Um, so it tells you that your, yeah, your power will, will influence how judged you are or if you're guilty. So this comes a lot, uh, again, when they're judging political people or very, very strong and powerful people. And uh, again, when you're reading this kind of morale in the newspapers, they won't tell you this comes from les animaux malades de la peste. No, you just are supposed to know about that. So this is why culture as a whole is so important, because um, when we make references in the conversation, we won't tell you what it is about. And uh, last one which is funny because when I was preparing this episode, I didn't know la morale came from this one. And that's le rat et l'huître. Le rat et l'huître, you have a beautiful illustration here of the rat and the oyster. And la morale here is tel est pris qui croyait prendre. Tel est pris qui croyait prendre. It means the one that thought would win, get caught. Um, and again, I didn't know this fab, but as I was preparing, I just fell on this line and I thought, oh, that's super interesting because even me as a French person, I knew la morale, but I didn't know where it came from. So that's it for Les Fables de la Fontaine. Um, there are a lot more to talk about this. Um, again, I talked about this in Exercise Your French. I have a full lesson in French about that. Um, but here, just on Commune Française TV, I wanted to show you this fantastic edition of it that was made by uh, Benjamin Rabier, written by Jean de La Fontaine in the 17th century. This edition is from the beginning of the 20th century. It's uh, Les Editions Taillandier. Highly recommended. You can buy lots of different editions of Les Fables de la Fontaine. And I think almost all the children in France got their own edition of it. Um, you might find them in your own language, I'm almost sure. But if you can read them in French, uh, pick the shortest ones, because it's uh, old fashioned French. It, it rhymes, but it's a bit difficult to understand. So again, I hope you like this episode. It was a short one. I wanted to show you more French culture and all these references that are hidden in our books and literature. Um, so the question for today is, do you know any of those Fables de la Fontaine? I would love to hear from you in the comments, especially if you learned them in high school or 
in France or if you knew in Moral but you didn't know where it came from and if you read them in your own language as well. So tell me in French uh, below the video in the comments. I look forward to hearing from you. To get more on books, on French culture and uh, well, less dress up but more episodes, I highly recommend you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any episode. And if you want my free crash course, Everyday French, uh, my Everyday French crash course that will help you double your everyday French in 10 days. Uh, it's free, I send it to you by email starting today. Just go to comeinfrances.com. You can also click on the link below the video and you will get uh, your free course right away just by leaving me your first name and your email. Um, see you next week. Salut!